starting right after the Mishnah on Daf Mem Tesamid Beis on the bottom of the Amud. The Mishnah spoke about the Nusach that you say in the Zimun, and the Mishnah said that if it's just three people, then you say Nevarech. If it's, if it's four people, so because it's you and another three, so you tell them uh, to say, what is the Lashon again? Baruchu, that you should bench, because they can bench in their own right. They don't need you to even uh, say it with them. Amma Shmuel, Shmuel said regarding this, A person should never exclude himself of the cloud of the, of the other people that he's joining along with them. That was a statement of Shmuel. Now we learned in the Mishnah, if there are three in him, so it's four, he turns to them and tells them to bench, and he's not including himself in that statement. So that seems to go against what Shmuel said. The Pshad in our Mishnah is, Ach Baruch if he wants, he can say Baruch to them, but to say Nevarich is better because then he includes himself, like Shmuel said, Al Yetzi Adam Atzmim and Aklau. It was said by Rav Tanina, here's a riot to what Shmuel said, Vav Nechlokin. If you have six people that are joining one meal, if they want to split and make two Zimons, three and three, they could. Ad Yud, they could split until ten, which means if you have. Um, I don't know, maybe if three want to leave earlier, for whatever reason, they want to split, you can split nine people, you can split into three groups. But once you have ten, because you're going to say a lekenu, so then they can't split. If you're going to say that either way you say nevarech, whether three, whether four, adif, and that's better, therefore they could split. If you're going to say that the pshat in our mission is, that when you have four, you have to say barchu to them, and that's better, so then why should you split? Once you split, you lose that opportunity to say Baruch Hu. So from here we see that Nevarech is just as good as saying Baruch Hu. That's the way Tesis learns Pshad in the Gemara. When the Gemara says Adif, it means Nevarech is just as good as Baruch Hu, So you don't lose anything by splitting. Shmamino. This is a raya. So since it's just as good, so then comes Shmuel and says, but it's better to include yourself together with the Tzibur. This is the way we pass them. We don't, we don't have in Shulchan Aruch. There's no such a thing as saying Baruch Hu Nevarich. We always say Nevarich. By the way, our Zimun begins before Nevarich. We have a Hagdama. Rabbi Yisai Mivalm Ben Shin Yishem Hashem Mevarich Mat Vadeilam. In the Gemara, that doesn't appear anywhere. B'chlal. The Zimun begins by Nevarich. This thing of Rabbi Yisai Mivalm Ben Shin comes from Zayar. That when, you, when you're preparing and starting to do a Dovah Shabbat you should have a Pesach Hagdama of Mivalm Ben Shin to, have a, to, to, get, to enter into it. That's it. It doesn't say something like that. Yeah, some kind of, it's not, in the Gemara, it doesn't say it anywhere. We learned in Abraisa, Ben Shaoma Baruchu, Ben Shaoma Nevarich. Whether he said Baruchu, whether he said Nevarich, ain't types in Isel Kach. We don't make him go over. Even though in the Mishnah it said if there's four people say Baruchu, but it's no difference. The Hanakdonin types in Isel Kach. People that are very particular will stop him on this, but it's, it's really, it's, there's no reason to. Not, not that Braisa says, um, of shaladam. You look at the brachas of a person, niker im tamad chachamu im lav. It could be recognizable whether he's a tamad chacham or not. And here the Gemara is going to bring a bunch of examples. Keitza. Rabbi, Yaimer, Rabbi said, uve tuvai. If when you're saying the zimun, you say, uve tuvai chayinu, so then, hare is a tamad chacham. With the Abish's goodness, that's a tamad chacham. Umituvai, if you use the term mituvai, hare is a bore, you're an ignoramus. Umituvai, you're minimizing the goodness of the Ebishter. We, we have only little good, we don't have that much good. So you're minimizing, praising the Ebishter for what he gives you. Amalea Abaya let Abdimi, said Abaya asked on this. Voxiv, there's a pasuk where it says, Umibirchascha, Yivarech Beis Avdecha. From your brachet, she should bless the house of your servant. So it says, Mibirchascha. So it does say with a man. So the Gemara answers, Lo'ilam, sorry, that's part of the Pasuk, Lo'ilam. And for the Gemara, B'Shay Shani. when you're requesting, when you're davening and asking for something, so then you don't ask for, for so much, you ask a little bit. Direct the Gemara, B'Shay Nami. regarding when you're davening for something, Hoksiv, Harchev Picha, open up your mouth wide and ask for whatever you want. Vamaleu, and Hashem says, and I will fill it. So you see that even when you ask, you ask for whatever you want. And for the Gemara, Ahu b'divrei Teirikziv. That pasuk is speaking about regarding divrei Teire. In, in matters of divrei Teire, there you can ask for whatever you want. Tanya, we learned in Abraise, Rabbi Yaimer b'tuve chayinu harez atamut chacham. If you said chayinu, and with his goodness we live, that's atamut chacham. Chayim, if you just say life, harez abur. 
So then that's a board because you're not talking about yourself. We just said before, Shmuel said, you shouldn't exclude yourself from the cloud. So you should say a Lashen where you include yourself as well. Nahar Beloi said the opposite. Say Chaim, thanking the Ebesher for all everyone's life. Now don't include, you don't have to say regarding yourself. But we don't pass it like him and we say Chayim. When you say this nusach in this way, nevarech, we should bench the Ebesher, she'achal no mishaloi, areze tamad chachim. That nusach is a tamad chachim. If you add, lemi she'achal no mishaloi, the one that we ate from him, Hareza a bore. That's a bore. Rashi says because Lemi sounds like you could got you could get your food from here, you can get your food from there. You happen to have got it from the Abishter and you're benching him. There's no two sources, so why would you want to add Lemi? But we do find that this isn't the Seder, the Nusach of the Agada. What do we say? Lemi Sha'asala So we do say Lemi that we thank to the one that performed all these all these miracles for our forefathers. Over there, it's clear who makes the miracle. It's not, it's, it's not the food, it's a nest, and that, that's obviously referring to the Ebishter. If you say, from what's his, from the Ebishter, if you just say, Baruch ala mazen she'achalnu, or nevarach ala mazen she'achalnu, you don't say mishaloi, hareiz abor, you're not clarifying that you're benching the Ebeshter. Amar avonu b'nei de Rabbi Shua, lo yamar an ala begimel. You have to add the word mishaloi only if it's three. The leke shem shemayim, so, because then you're not saying the Ebeshter's name. You're, just, you're saying nevarach she'achalnu, so you have to add shaloi. Avo basara, if there's ten people, the ike shem shemayim, so then you're mentioning the Ebeshter's name, mocha chemilsa. So you don't have to add Mishaloi. It's clear because you said Nevarach Alakainu Shachalnu. So it's clear. Kedetnan, as we learned in the Mishnah, Keinyan Shehu Mavarech Kach Einin Acharov, and the Nusach of the Mishnah was Baruch Hashem Alakei Yisrael Alakei Yitzvoyes Yeshev Akrum Alamazin Shachalnu. That's the Mishnah that we just learned yesterday. So it says Alamazin Shachalnu, and it does not add Mishaloi. Shaloi. Okay, but our minig though is that we, even when we say Alakainu, we do we do say Baruch Alakainu Shachalnu Mishaloi Vetuv Chayinu. You do add the even then. Going to the next part of the Mishnah, what did it say? Echod asara ve'echod asara riboy. Whether it's 10 people, whether it's 10,000 people, it's always the same Nusach of Zimun. You just add one elekeinu and that's it. Correct the Gemara, hokuf The Mishnah contradicts itself. Omrit, first it says, Echod asara ve'echod asara riboy. Whether it's 10 or 10,000, alma kiyadadinu. So we see that 10 or 10,000 are the same. Immediately after that, the Mishnah says, It gives the a separate Nusach for 10, for 100, for 1,000, and so on, for 10,000. So it's a contradiction. It's not a question. The two parts of the Mishnah are two different Tanoim. Rabbi Yaseg Lili and Rabbi Kiva. The Tanan, as it says later in the Mishnah, Rabbi Yaseg Lili Yaimer, the Firei Vakal. You have to change the Nusach according to the size of the people. And Mavarchim. Shanamar and Rabbi Yisagli said because it says b'makhelo is baruchu alekim and Rabbi Kiva disagreed so the two parts of the Mishnah correspond to the two opinions that are brought later which are Rabbi Yisagli and Rabbi Kiva. Now the Gemara brings the source. Doesn't even tell us Rabbi Kiva's source. Rabbi Kiva's opinion. Yeah, because it brings it right here. Now the Gemara is going to bring the source of their machlekes. Amar Rabbi Kiva ma'matzina bebeis akneses v'cholu. Rabbi Kiva said just like when it comes for minyan and davening. We don't distinguish between 10, 20, 100, 1,000. The same is also with benching. So the Gemara says, The Pasuk that Rabbi Yisak Lili brought, where it says, So what does he do with that Pasuk? He learns from that Pasuk something different. Even the babies in their mother's womb also sang Shire by Chris Yamsov. Shanemar, the Postic says, They benched the Abishter even when they were in their, in their womb, in the source, in their mother's womb. So that's what that Postic is written for. So I, I'm not sure how what the pshat over here is regarding makhelos. The Gemara doesn't explain why it teaches makhelos, how it teaches makhelos loshen rabim. But from the word mekayr Yisrael, that's the source. Uh, the source meaning in the mother's womb. That's referring to Kriyas Yamsov. The idach Rabbi Yisrael Galili says mekayr nafke. There's two parts of the pasuk. From makhelos you learn out that even 
that there's different levels of kohol, 10, 100, and 1,000, and 10,000. From the word uh, mekayer, you learn out that they benched uh, by Kriyas Yamsov, even in the source, in their mother's womb, two different things. Marave halacha kerabakiva. We pass on like rabakiva. This is the halacha. You always say alekeinu, you never say more than alekeinu. They, they went to, to buy a meal by the Reish Kolusa. Rav Choma was looking to see, do we have a hundred people there? He wanted to know the number of people. There's no point in counting to see if you have a hundred people. We passed like Rav Kiva. Now Rav said a different incident that happened by the Reish Kolusa. And this is something that has a as irrelevant for today, as I'll say soon. Ki achlina nrifta beresh kolusa. When we ate bread, when we had a meal by the resh kolusa, now as we'll see in a moment, this meal by the resh kolusa was apparently in a big room, very big table, or many couches as they ate then, and it was a large crowd. So what happened? Mevarchinan gimel gimel. We would make our own zimel, three people together on our own, not together with the main meal that the resh kolusa benched. Trek <clears> to <throat> If they're not going to bench together with the Reish Galusa, but they had enough people to combine ten together, so why didn't they combine ten? So he said, yeah. Shama Reish Galusa. The Reish Galusa will hear, to make too much of a commotion, if they're going to bench with ten people together, and he's going to hear, and he's going to have a kpeide. So why aren't they yaitze with the zimon of the Reish Galusa? Why not do it together with him? But why did they have to bechlal make themselves? And for the Gemara, I did the afshu kula alma leishami because there were so many people and there was so much noise. If they would listen to the reish kolusa, they couldn't hear. Now don't forget that then it wasn't just the zimun, the nevarich that they had to hear, but the whole benching. They were yaitz the whole benching from him, so they couldn't hear the entire benching in the whole room. So therefore, they made their own zimun. Yeah, kula alma leishami. Not everybody could hear. So this Gemara is a source for somebody that's negated today, the Rebbe is Mitzayim to the Shulchan Aruch, that quotes this Gemara, the Negei to the Shaila, the Negei to Hasana. People come to Hasana, they wash, and then the people around the table bench, and they make their own zimun, and they're not, they don't wait until the zimun of the head table, which may bench, I don't know, 12 o'clock, 1 o'clock, and they, two things. First of all, they don't wait for them, and second of all, they don't say Shasimcha B'mayna either. Is, is it allowed to be done or not? No, you know, people don't, people don't, don't say Shasim Chubim they And they're good. not necessarily doing it with 10 people. Maybe they are. I don't know. Uh, people have 10 know. people around the table. Why Usually not. Oh, no, so really so what's the pshat? Uh, so the Rebbe in the letter says two things. First of all, so what, what are you suggesting here? People should have to wait until the end of the chasana. That's a very long time. Most people can't wait until the end of the chasana for the benching. What's the other suggestion? So even if they benched alone, they should say Shasim Chubim at least. They're, they're eating by a chsud of a chasn and kala. So the Rebbe says, it says here in the Gemara, that if people do their own thing and it makes a commotion, it's going to be makpid, the head, ta- the head table. If you're going to make your own shasim b'mayinai with your own sheva brachis, it'll be a kepeda for the, by the head table. <laughs> so uh, that's what you see in our Gemara. But the Rebbe over there says that in, in this Gemara right over here, which is brought in Shulchan Aruch, you don't have it in the Altar Rebbe Shulchan Aruch, it's missing that part, but it's in Simukuf Tzadeh Gimel, this ain is brought in Shulchan Aruch, that any time you make a zimun, and you do it with three and not with ten because the people at the head table are going to be makpid, <laughs> you can make that zimun with three. Not a problem. And the Rebbe says, since this became the minix, and then you can continue doing this. And the Rebbe adds another word, Hayes people that wash by a chasana, that are planning on leaving early, they lachat chile were washing with the plan of leaving early, the food that they're eating is not part of that simchas chasan v'kala that mechoyiv and zimun in, in mechoyiv and shasimcha b'mayinai. It's a separate meal that they're eating, that they're leaving earlier, and And therefore the Rebbe says that the minig is okay, that people can eat, and uh, they don't have to say Shasim Chubim Mainai, and you don't have to necessarily have a minion, they could, based on this Gemara. One of the, this is the one of the Mishra, the, the what? Are they, are they missing out on the Mitzvah? Yeah, I would say so. They're missing and eating the Suda of Chasim Vakala, for sure they're missing out on the Mitzvah. But if a person can't stay that late, he can't. The Rebbe says they're mitai me brius. I think the Rebbe says they're also tirde brius. And then the Rebbe, I think, writes that Dvarim built it to him. This is a letter from the 50s. Could be that uh, this was the time when there was no mechitzas by the dancing, so people would come and then, but then leave early. Kopanim. So this is an interesting thing. Zakti Gemara Vaita Amar Rabbe Toisvo Hani Gimel the Karchi Rifte Bahadi Adodi. Three people ate a meal, ate bread together. For Kadim Chad Minayu Ubarach Letaytei. One of them went, and he didn't wait for the Zimun, and he benched for himself. 
So what happens now? Could the other two that didn't bench yet do a zimun together with him? They could make a zimun together with him, but he, yes, even though he benched, and this is brought in Shulchan Aruch, but he, he's, they're joining him into, his, into their zimun, but he's not, be, he's not going to be yaitzah with their zimun. He already benched already. We learned this before. You can never do zimun retroactively after you bench. So they could join him in the zimun, but he's not going to be yaitzah with their zimun to make up what he missed, that he benched early. And this is brought in because the Chathchile, he ate together with them, so therefore he can join their zimun. So he says, Baruch he, Baruch. he says, He joins in the, joins in the entire zimun. Since he himself, the Pyle, benched, he can't be yates with that, that zimun after he benched. He but because a yates he ate with them, and he was L'Chathchile Mechuyiv, and the zimun together with them, the fact that he personally benched is not a problem. They could join him yeah, in their zimun. I already thought that after he benched, no. he's finished. If, if the other way around is the Gemara bring no, it no, here. Saying, uh, the uh, other no, way around is brought in uh, What happens if two people benched and one person didn't bench? Then then uh, yeah, then yeah, it's too late. Then you can't join. It happens all the time. One guy decides he's gone, and all of a sudden you're left without a zimun. So, but, so if he's gone, he's gone. If you no, left out of the room, I don't mean he's gone. He's in the middle of benching, and you're like, one second, we maybe went to bench together. So, right? so, so, so here you go. Right over here, you can still do the zimun after he benched. Yes, absolutely. Oh, one second. The Gemara here is referring to the statement of Rabbi Shmuel going to Barchu. How do you say Barchu in a shul? So the first Nusach was you say either Rabbi Shmuel said, you just say, uh, not Rabbi Kiva said, you say Barchu Sashem, and then Rabbi Shmuel says, you say Barchu Sashem Hamavayrach. Okay. So now Rav from Bar Papa, Ikla Lebe Knishta, he came to a shul, the Abaye Giber, or the Avi Giber. So he went to read from the Sefer Teireh, and he said, Baruch Hu Sashem. And he didn't have a Mavayrach. And he was quiet. So he had, there was a loud response from everybody, and they said, Baruch Hu Sashem, Hamavayrach. And they did add a Hamavayrach. So Rav commented about this, Avi Giber, Pasya Uchma, a black, uh, black vessel, vessel or something. Yeah, vessel. black vessel. Like he gave him a... a, 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 a yeah. <laughs> But how do you pluck the Lamalach? Why are you getting involved in this Machlaikis? Why aren't you adding Hamavayrach? In other words, even Abba Kiva that did not say Hamavayrach agrees that you could say it. He just says you don't have to. So why are you saying it only according to Abba Kiva? Just add Hamavayrach like Rabbi Shmuel said. We see that the minig in the Velt is to say Hamavayrach. So you don't have to be a Chacham and say it differently than everyone else and skip the Hamavayrach. Three that ate together, they're not allowed to divide and then lose the chance of zimun. The same is with four or five. But if it's six people, they could divide because they can do two, they can make it in two groups. Until ten, they could divide into two groups or then into ten groups, oh, sorry, into three groups, that is, if it's uh, nine people. But if it's ten, they could divide. Ten cannot divide at half until twenty, so then they can divide in two groups. If you have two groups that are eating in the same house, if some people that are in one area can see other people in another area, they can join in one zimun. This could be like when you know when you're in a large dining hall, like in yeshiva or in other places, in a chasen or whatever it is, people are not necessarily sitting around the same table. But as long as Ray and Elo as Elu, they could and should join in the Zimun. Vim Lav, if they can't see each other, Elu Mazam Latzman, the Elu Mazam Latzman, they do the Zimun separately, even if it means losing a minion, because they're going to have separate, but they, they, each one does the Zimun for themselves. Now the Mishnah says a different thing totally about wine, because Zimun is, uh, according to many, Minhagim, done on wine. So the Mishnah says about wine, when you bench on wine. So you don't bench on wine, you have to dilute it with water. This is the wine on Mulligan Saifu, which was very, very strong, and the wine was only made for, for drinking when they diluted it with water. The Chachamim say, Even with, if it's not diluted, you do bench on it. So the Gemara starts with the first statement of the Mishnah. It said in the beginning that if you have three people, they're not allowed to divide. You have to do the zimun. What's the Chiddush? This was the first Mishnah of this Pedic. Tanina Chod Zimna. Gimel Sha'achlu Ka'achas Chayav and Lezamin. Three that ate together have to do the zimun, which means they shouldn't divide. They have to bench together. So the Gemara gives a few answers here. 
Hokamashmolon, one pshar is Kihoda, Merababa, Mashmo, Gimushi Yashvu, Lecho Kaachas, three that sat down to eat together, but Dai and Loyochlu, and they still, still didn't eat yet, Einan Ashar and Lecholi. Said they sat down to eat together, they already shouldn't divide. Most of Shainim say that the pshar and this Gemara is not stumped that they sat down. But they sat, they washed, they sat, they, they made a bracha, but they didn't yet eat a kazayas, so they're not yet chayiv in benching. But the very fact that they sat down and they made a moitzi and they began their meal, they, sh- they shouldn't divide, they should finish their meal, they're together and bench together. So that you didn't see from the first Mishnah. That's the Kiddush of our Mishnah. Lishna achrime, another pshat, Amar Ababa, Mashmuel, Hachi Ketani, Gimel Shiyosh, Vulech, Lakaachas, three that sat down to eat together, Afo Pisha, Kolech, Vechad, Echel, Mikikroi, every person eats his own loaf of bread, Eina, Nashon, Lecholek, they may not divide. From the first Mishnah in the Pedic, you made a thought that it's only if eating from the same loaf. So the Mishnah says it again, even if each one eats from a separate loaf. Inami, Kihoda Ravone, Dama Ravone, Ravone said, Gimoshabomi, Gimel Chaburais. How about if he had three people that ate a meal in, in another group, and then they left their group that they were in, and now these three join together? And on Ashon and Lecholek, they may not divide, and they have to now bench together with Zimun. With the original group. No, no with the new group. group. So you have three separate groups. And One three each. individuals from those three separate groups ah. left their fir- first group and then joined together in a new group. So they have to make a new zimon once they join together. Amar Rav Chiste, but Rav Chiste explains what, how, in what case this is. <coughs> if they originated from a group where there were three people and they were chayiv on zimon there and they left that zimon and now they joined together and they're three together. So now they have to make a new zimon. Rabbi, Rabbi said, Maron, and this halacha wasn't said, Elo, hagdimu hanach If where they were in their original group, they didn't do a zimun, they didn't join the zimun there. Okay, what, in other words, what, may, if, if what happened was, by their original group, they joined the Nevarach Shachalnu, which is the zimun, but they didn't stay for the rest of the benching. Usually, when you join the Zimun, you stay for the rest of the benching, to be Yoyitz Adol benching. They were only there for the beginning of the Zimun, but they weren't there for the rest of the benching. They left. And they went now to three, came and joined together in a new group, and formed a new group. But yes, they heard the Nevalech Shachalnu by the original group. So, the, so the, only, again, only if the Loyak do Mohanach Vazman Alai Bodechtayu. If they did not hear the Zimun in the original group, they left before that, then if they form a new group, they have to make a Zimun. If they already joined the Zimun in their first group that they were in, even though they didn't hear the rest of the benching, the obligation of Zimun has left them and they can't join for a new group of Zimun. So the Gemara brings an interesting source for this. From where do I see this? What happens if you have a bed, which I guess is a bed which is assembled from parts, and part of it was stolen, so now you only have part of the bed. Chetzia, again, half of it was stolen. Nignava chetzia. Oisha of the chetzia. Half of the bed was, was lost. Oisha chalkua achin oishutvin. Brothers that inherited this bed, this bed that is, they divided it and half got one, uh, half and one, uh, half got the other half. How they're going to use it, I don't know. But they divided this bed. Small so it, <laughs> yeah. so the, the bed was tome. If this bed was tome, now that it was divided, it was disassembled, tohaira. Now the bed is tahir. The halach is by every keli. Once it's broken, so it becomes tahir. Hechzirua, once they assembled it back together, mekabel is tumah. Now it could be mekabel tumah again, but only mekano la'abba. It could only be mekabel tumah, mekano la'abba, the previous tumah does not come back. So what do we see from here? Mekano la'abba in, it only becomes tome from here onward. But alamafrei aloi, the original tumah does not come back. Alma, I see from here, Kivin de Palgua, once they disassembled it, they divided it, Parach la Tumma Mine, then Tumma leaves it. Okay? Now, Taisus explains, this is really the halacha regarding any keli that you break. Once it's not a keli anymore, the Tumma leaves it. So why does the Gemara have to bring, punk this Mishnah about a bed that you disassemble and then you assemble? Taisus says, because by every keli when you break it, you can't really put it back together, or it's not made for that to be put back, to get, back together. The Chiddush of this case over here is that it's a bed that's made to disassemble and assemble. So you may think that after you assembled it again, it gains back its original status. And therefore, whatever Tumah it had before comes back. Right? And, and then this is a marshal for our case over here. So the Gemara says, Hachanami, over here as well. Kivin da'azmon alayu. 
once they already did the zimun before, korach zimun minayu. The zimun does not come back. Even though these three people joined together now, so you may think that they, they left zimun and they rejoined, so once they rejoined, they gained back that original zimun, so we say no. Once the zimun flew off, so to speak, it re was removed from them, the zimun doesn't come back. I understand, this new group they ate? No, even without eating in the new group, that's the chiddush. Even without the new group eating, but if they formed a new group together and they're high of the bench, they, there's a new zimun that they have to make if they didn't hear the zimun before. Beis, chaburez, v'cholo, etc. in the Mishnah, two groups that if they see each other, they join in the zimun. So now the Gemara says another way they can join. Tana, im yesh, shamesh, beineyen, shamesh, mitzarfan. If there is a servant, a waiter, that's waiting for everyone together, so even if they don't see each other and they're in the same room, in the same house, they can join in the zimun as well. Right? And this is also, um, whatever, in a chasana, wherever you are, if you're in a big room and you don't really see the people that are on the other side of the hall, but if it's one waiter, it's usually not one waiter though, but if it was one waiter that's serving everybody it's together, so then, uh, yeah, okay. So now this Gemara over here, the rest of the Gemara is all going to be about wine. Till the end of the Pedic, basically. Before you added water into it, you can't make the bracha of Bayri Priya Gofen. The only reason Chachamim made a special bracha of Bayri Priya Gofen, if you remember, and not the regular bracha of Bayri Ashakam Niyabdvare, is because it's it's something that has, it went, it's, it's very choshev, that the, it's not, it's not the same as any other juice that comes out of any other peyri. But if it's not roy to drink, so it's just like any other juice. You don't make a bayri priya gofen. Ella bayri priya eats. You make the bracha like you would make on the fruit itself. And another thing, v'noitlin mimenuli yadayim. You could use it to wash your hands for amaytzi. It's like water, basically. Rashi holds that the pshat over here is, you could wash for amaytzi with water, with any juice, and you could also wash with this wine. This wine is no different than any juice. You're not allowed to wash Ramaytzi with wine, with honey, I believe, and with oil. That's not You're allowed yeah. to wash with juice. But with juice, well, it's a machlaikis, actually. Machlaikis. But according to Rashi, you're allowed to wash with any juice. The Altenev brings a few opinions. Rashi's opinion over here is you can wash with any juice. So wine that has not been diluted with water, it has that lach like any juice. But if you had water, you cannot wash it. Once you added water, so now it becomes chosh of like wine. Mevarchan ala bayri priya gofen has a special bracha of bayri priya gofen. Ve'ein net l'mimenu liyadayim, and you cannot, you're not allowed to wash for it for al tzus daim either. Divrei Rabbi Yezer, this is Rabbi Yezer's opinion. The Chachamim Ma'imrim, the Chachamim say, Benka, Chol Benka, Mevarchan ala bayri priya gofen. Either way, the bracha is bayri priya gofen. Ve'ein net l'mimenu liyadayim, and either way, you don't use it to wash your hands with it. Okay, so the reason why the Chachamim say either way you shouldn't wash your hands with it is. Because busy oichlin, and here the Gemara is going to discuss. This is a sugi here about busy oichlin. You're not allowed to waste food or just destroy food. So to wash your hands on tilsa dying with wine is ruining uh, good wine. So either way, you're not allowed to wash with it. Keman ozlo. So now the Gemara brings another thing about uh, food. Keman ozlo hadam ashmuel. Whose opinion does it follow? But this that Shmuel said, oisa adam kotzrachav v'pas. Person can do any of his needs that he wants with bread. He can use it as a decoration. He can whatever. Person can do whatever he wants with the bread, not just for eating. Command whose opinion is it? Rabbi Rabbi that says they can use wine for an atilas yidayim, and he doesn't care about the fact that you're wasting the wine. So also when he gets to the bread. would be Regarding a kodesh of bracha, she'ein mevarchan olav achiyitl no toichin mayin. If you just, if you're not stam drinking the wine, but it's a wine for a bracha, like for benching or for kiddush, so then you have to dilute it, and it should be proper wine. My time, what's the reason? Amar Avishia be'inon mitzvah minamufcha. When it comes to a mitzvah, the mitzvah should done minamufcha with wine, with with it's diluted with water. Verabanon lemai chaz. You know, according to the rabbanon. The wine before it's been diluted. What is it raw for? In those times, people did not drink the wine before it was diluted with water. So why are you making a very pretty agafen on it, according to the Rabbana? Um, Rab Zayde, so Rab Zayde answered, it is raw for something. They didn't just drink the wine, Take, but there was this drink 
Now, Rashi gives the names of it that it comes up in other places in Gemara, but there was this drink that they made from the pure wine. I think they added um, spices and honey or some honey other things in it. What are they? Huh? Honey, pepper. pepper, and whatever, maybe dates and things. Yeah. They added in it, and that was dafka with the pure wine. Probably, so, if, if the some kind of punch. a drink. It's probably the word punch. Similar to punch. Okay, Rashi, punch, punch. punch balaz. Okay, no, no. <laughs> So it was some kind of a drink, and therefore you see that even the pure wine before it's diluted is all people also drink it. So you make an agafen on it because the drink could be shahako, whether it's <coughs> yain. It shows. I mean, the reason why you don't make a hagafen according to the Rebbe Yezer is because there's no shvach to this wine. But the very fact that people are right to drink it, so there's a shvach to it, and therefore it deserves a special bracha. If you put wine inside a drink, like an alcoholic drink, mm -hmm. and you mix it with other stuff and stuff like that. Okay, that's already a whole different uh, shiloh. What's the roi, so what's the tofel? So no, but it's in a case where the wine is the roi. The wine is the roi, so the bracha is a gofen. Now this is all regarding not destroying food. So there were four things that were said about bread, not to come to destroy the bread. Don't place raw meat on bread because it could make it disgusting. People won't want to eat it. Don't hand over a full, like a totally full cup of water over the bread because it might spill on the bread and people won't eat it. You don't throw bread. Don't lean any platter of food on bread because it may spill on the bread. These three Amiraim ate a meal together. There was there was dates there, there was Imainim there. Shokal Mazutra, so Mazutra took a Pasak Likame Ravashi Distana. And he threw to Ravashi a raw piece of meat. Or actually a cooked piece of meat, Rashi says. He threw, he threw a piece of meat to him. Amalei, so he said to him, Lai Savala Marla Hodatanya, do you not hold of what we learned? Ain Zarkana Sa Ichlin? You don't throw food. So he answered him, I pass, Tanya. That was said only regarding bread. You don't throw bread, but to go throw food is not an issue. But Tanya, Keshem Shein Zorkinus, pass, Kachin Zorkinus, Eichlin. But we learned in another Braith, he said, just like you're not allowed to throw bread, you're not allowed to throw food either. Malay, so he responded, no, but Tanya in a different Braith, it says, Afa Pisha Ein Zorkinus, pass, Avul Zorkinus, Eichlin. You're not allowed to throw bread, but you are allowed to throw food. So we have a student in the Braith this year. So here's the way we resolve this. If when you throw it, it makes the food disgusting, you're not allowed to throw the food even if it's not bread. But if it's food that's like, the uh, example we brought before, rimoinim or, or, or nuts and things that are not get lost, by throwing them, you're allowed to throw them. But this is the source for the fact that the kids play with the nuts, uh, uh, whatever. So how you let them have a huh? How you have a kair of you, you no, know, what's the throwing? Food on top of the bread. Ah, the food is on top of the bread. But it's not, um, so yeah, okay, it's not an ifen that it's going to um, spill over. It's only if it's a kaira filled with food that will spill over. And then that's the hetta. When you make a maitzi, then you're not supposed to mm -hmm. give actually in the hand. When you make a maitzi, you're yeah, not yeah. supposed to give to them a in the hand. So they do throw it. They throw the bread. Yeah, but that's for a different reason. By the shvadim, they don't, throw, they don't give the bread in the hand because this, they said it's like giving, it, you know, let's say daka. You know, where you throw the bread, that means it's uh -huh. although, you know, uh, so it's free for every little shepherd. Okay. Shepa. okay. Shepa. No, no. That's the way you you're allowed to have wine flowing in a pipe. I guess they had this way of making a the fountain. wine. Ah, a wine fountain, I guess, yeah. In front of a chasen and kala to, to amuse them. You're allowed to throw different kinds of nuts, walnuts, uh, in front of them to amuse them. But the, the throwing, that's only in the... In the uh, Summer, summer with, if it falls to the ground, it's not going to get disgusting. It's not, it's the, the, the ground is not wet or whatever. Not in the winter, when if it falls on the ground, it's going to be disgusting. But if it rolls, if it's bread rolls or anything, then you're not, that you're not allowed to throw. Not in the summer and not in the winter, because once you throw bread and it falls down, people don't want to eat it. What happened if you forgot to make a bracha and you put the food into your mouth? What happens now? Put the food onto one side of your mouth and bevarach, and you make the bracha. Now the Gemara brings uh, three braises about this. Tony Chod and one brace it says, Boilo. Swallow it. You forgot to make a bracha? Swallow the food. Tanya Idoch and another braise, Poilton. You have to spit out the food, make a bracha, and then eat it. 
Vitani Yedach, and a third Brais, it says, Mesalkan, that you put the food to the side of your mouth and you make a bracha. So how do we resolve these three Brais? Loikashya. Hod the Tanya Boilon, when it says that you swallow it, the mashkin. This is regarding uh, 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 liquid, drinks. So that, if you, if you forgot to make a bracha, you just swallow it. But in Shulchan Aruch, it's brought, but the Ramah arg argues and says no, and then Mogan Avram says, even regarding mashkin, you should spit it out. When it says that you spit it out, that's something that if you spit it out, it's not disgusting. So you can make a bracha on it after you spit it out. When it says that you put it to the side of your mouth, it's disgusting, so therefore you don't want to spit it out and make a bracha on food that's disgusting. You'll put it on the side of your mouth, and that's how you make a bracha. Now, frek the Gemara. If that's a solution, that you can just put it to the side of your mouth and make a bracha with, with, when, when something is disgusting, if you're going to spit it out, so even if something won't be disgusting, put it at the side of your mouth, and that's how you make the bracha. Make the bracha. Tergme Rav Yesi, Rav Yitzcha, Kaska, Kameide, Rav Yesi, Bar Ovin, Mishmeide, Rav Yechenen, Mishum Shenemar, Yimolet Pihi Tehi Lesecha. You want to bench the Abisha with a full mouth. Full mouth as in an empty mouth. Yeah. Oh. Meaning that with your mouth fully. You want your full mouth to be dedicated to the bracha. So if it's at all possible, you don't want to be masalik at the study and you want to spit it out. Let's just finish the two dots. It's a hemshik of this Indian. The Gemara says, You ate, you drank, you didn't make a bracha. Could you make a bracha after you finished eating? Amalahu. So Rav Chista said, If you ate garlic, and you smell from the garlic, If you eat garlic again, And you should smell even more from garlic. You did one iser, you ate without making a bracha, you should make a bracha afterwards, but now it's going to be a bracha levatala, because you ate already. So he's saying, you shouldn't make the bracha again. Omer Ravine, Ravine argues and says, Hilkach, I feel a gama sudasai, even if you finish the suda, he should make a bracha over again. And what, what the Hilkach over here actually says, what he's saying is, if you, can, if you remember in the middle of your Suda, you can make a bracha, because you're continuing to eat. Even if you finish the bracha, he says, no, you can also make a bracha. Why? He brings a ray from a different uh, scenario. The Tanya, we learned in Abra, he said, Tobal a person is table in a mikveh, he comes out of the mikveh, in a case where he was mukhiv to go to the mikveh and he has to make a bracha, baliyasa, when he comes out of the mikveh, then he makes the bracha. So you see, you can make the bracha even after you do the mitzvah. So this is the raya, the same thing regarding food. You can make the bracha even afterwards. But the Gemara says, no, we don't pass in this way. There he couldn't make the bracha before. He was tame, so he couldn't make the bracha before. Therefore, he may, we push it off to after. Here he could have made the bracha before. Once it's pushed off, he ate and drank already. It's the end of the meal. It's pushed off and he doesn't make the bracha. Thank you.